just following on from talking about that Lucy Let Me case a little the other day, the can of worms uh, has, has spilled. And it's like now everyone's trying to, in their way, uh, carve a piece of it off for themselves. I'm doing it now, and I'm going to make a video about it. But I'm trying to be helpful, and I don't expect to get any attention for it, really. I get me same two or three hundred views, and there'll be people who say, well, some value there, and there'll be some who say, you're wrong. You're not an expert. You haven't been to university. Okay. But it's that. It's like that ridiculous one trick pony um uh black lives matter woman who's like you notice the uh, whiteness you know whiteness is an ideology that makes it so someone like this can get away with this kind of uh thing it's like if it had been a black woman she'd have been immediately caught and it's like what a terrible way of expressing it but i read it and i'm like well she got a point like what so yeah but it's not whiteness that's the problem it's feminism she's been given the benefit of the doubt it's like i, I just read earlier tonight that the, the woman who was responsible for her, her boss is now the boss of the nurses in rochdale where i live and she's been suspended because this has all been hushed up Everyone thought she was totally brilliant until it's now been exposed in a trial that she's totally incompetent and just straight up gives women the benefit of the doubt because, hey, no one can believe it true. And that's why evil people, sadists, get away with murders. No one would believe it true. Nah, there's no one as evil as that until you find out there is. It's a funny relationship the, between the world and serial killers. I, I've talked about serial killers before, and it's like serial killers. I, in, 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 a, in, a, in a in a in a in a way, I wish I didn't know about what it's about. I wish I'd been a different person. I wish I didn't understand it. It's like, why do you understand serial killers, John? It's it's, it's the sadism. It's the enjoyment of hurting people. It's like I was raised in some ways. I had a, a lot of people around me in my life who used to enjoy punishing me. And I knew they found excuses to do it. And they punished me. And they enjoyed it. Men feel good about themselves. And as a kid, you, you're beholden to it. But as an adult, you get to think about it. You remember what it fe feels like. And you remember what happened. It's like, what kind of sad bastard does that to a seven-year-old? What kind of sad bastard does that to a five-year-old? And it's like, yeah, there are people out there who enjoy it. Now, the thing is, with people who enjoy that, it's like a drug. You feel a <laughs> deep delight. That, that wicked giggle. They enjoy it. But it has a hangover. Later they feel real sorry about it. So what you get then is you get people treat you real cruelly, cruelly, and enjoy it. And then two hours later they're crying their eyes out, apologising to you, and that's not appropriate behaviour when you're a child. They, where they're coming to you asking for forgiveness for what they've done, and then you've got the other flavour of it when they get sick of that and they start saying things like, "Look what you made me do." As if they've got no agency, where they disown themselves. That's sadism, and that's how people in their own way deal with it. There's a hangover, there's a downer, and it'd be a matter of, like alcohol, you know, if you get into a it's similar, it's a drug. People enjoy harming other people. Sadists, evil people. Why did they do it? For fun, to prove they're better than you. For fun, they'll do it. So I get, I've been targeted by these people since the very start, always. And then it's come to a, a, a time when I recognize it as, <laughs> oh, so you've stopped hitting me now, have you? Now I'm a bit too big. Now you think I might fire one back. 
well, I'm too afraid to fire one back because you've been beating me since I was a kid. I'm too afraid to fire one back. I'm like a, a dog that's been whipped. But you don't know that. And you know you've got it coming. So all of a sudden the violence is off the table because you're a little bit too big for it. And then when you find out you're a little bit too big for it, when you've been in that way abused, you recognise what it is you're doing when you start to do it. When you start to enjoy it in people. I used to enjoy it in people on a football field and then shake hands with them and say, good game. I would enjoy bullying them and hurting them. They kicked me as hard because they were the same kind of people, but... I know what it feels like. It's like you can get on a run at that. That downside where you feel bad about it starts to fade. Get used to it. And then it's just, you know, happy, jolly, let's pick on everyone. <coughs> <coughs> And it's like over the years I've learned that it's like, okay, I've got this thing about my nature, me, as to where I could fall into that pretty quick. I know it. It's like, uh, <coughs> same way as I don't drink alcohol, but I'm not against it. And if someone was to offer me some, I'm like, yeah, but I'm, I know better. I know I'm going to regret it. I treat with respect. Well, I'm that way too about violence. It's like we have to keep that off the table. It's like why? Because I enjoy it far too much. Can know that you can get into it. Know that it can be a come a, 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 an entertainment and even an art form. Know it. <coughs> uh, it's like my ancestors have spilt fucking seas of blood. And I see that in everybody. I see that everyone's got that capability of being a killer. I really do see it. <coughs> and it's like, it's a path. You don't just suddenly, oh, you're not born that way. No, you've been on a path that led you to that moment your old life. So it's nothing's ever out of nowhere. It's like, she will have been, she'll have been de destroying good men, I should think, for a good 10 years, maybe longer. Maybe that's where she got to start being cruel. That's a big feature when you start to dig around her, because the thing, my, my outlook, you know, for the last 10 years has been, <coughs> the world's full of evil people. This is how they operate, they say this. I'll use different words for it. I'll say, oh, you know, put it together with the borderline personality side of the narcissism, but it's like, no, it's like the, the, the crux of it is it is sadism. I am talking about sadists, but you're not really allowed to talk about sadists. So you might as well be talking about monsters. You might as well be talking about demons. You might as well be talking about devil. devils are sadists. <coughs> and then the notion that there's sadistic women in the world is what gets you cancelled by the feminists. Saying it. You're done. There's uh, that group, they just perpetually will cause ranks to protect one of their own when they haven't killed a load of babies, but they've done similar cruel things. There just aren't any dead babies, but they've done terrible cruel things where they've destroyed people's lives and led to deaths and murders. It's like you speak out about them you got a cult of witches come after you. You operate in exactly the same way as that head nurse who's covered up for that serial killer because she could not believe it to be true. Surely not. Can't see it in herself. Doesn't know about it. So therefore it must not exist. And I'm telling you it's in everybody. So I'm telling you that that person is blind absolutely blind to cruelty 
is likely someone who operates along the same lines can't self-reflect to look at oneself as to say you know do I enjoy power too do I enjoy inflicted cruelty do I enjoy flexing on people telling them to shut up dismissing them do I enjoy that too and they'd be on the same road as to where the narcissistic blind boss would know the sadist and the sadist would remind them of themselves oh she's alright she's just like me but it's like no this one's um that thing that everyone's afflicted with as to where we know all of us know what it is to be harmed when we were kids one way or another whether we were humiliated whether we were shouted at you know we've, we've all been broken down to cry and the like and it's like this one has been picking away at it picking away on it and sort of building up to her eventual big hits and highs which was killing those babies an affront to nature to go to war with God and it'd be hilarious don't see anyone stopping me it's, it's evil but it's like I'm, I've been listening to people claiming to be professional clinicians, psychoanalysts, and they're saying, that I was listening to one guy earlier and he created a new category of person and that be the nurse serial killer and would only compare one to the other. It's like, wow, it's like, um, what I found out about this lady, she sounds a lot more like Peter Sutcliffe than anyone else. It's like it strikes me that she was having a lot of fun when people were running round saying, I think there's something wrong, and she was having a lot of fun muddy in the water. She was able to create and shape reality, and she was able to pull the wool over everyone's eyes and enjoy it. Can you imagine being the person who's gone to work, killed a child, and then turned up for work the next day? <laughs> Oh, what fun that must have been for her. You know, Peter Sutcliffe, he used to drive around in his truck doing his day job and be listening to stories about himself on the radio and he thought it was absolutely brilliant. He was making the world stop and start at his command and nobody knew but him. Nobody knew the truth. The mugshots went around his town and they all looked a bit like him. And do you know what his nickname at work was? Ripper. Because he looked like the mugshots of the Yorkshire Ripper. He was the Yorkshire Ripper. In the end, you know, when he got caught with just standard police work, he was bursting to tell his story. He sat down and laid a, you know, um, he, he gave him such a, 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 you know, he gave him chapter and verse, confessed to everything took pride in what he'd done, gave himself a higher purpose. God instructed me to like rid the world of the whores. It's like, how convenient for you. How convenient for you and your tastes. With him, like a drug, did what did a killing, felt all right for a week or two, and then he got that urge to do it again. You know, like if you were a, you know, a gambler, junkie. Because fundamentally, we are talking about the same thing. It's like there is an active drug that can be harvested from another human being. And that is to have them under your power and in pain. Or afraid. And you can like, play with them. And then being afraid means you're a big guy. And you, it's all neurotransmitters. It's like you feel it. You, people are harvesting other people. 
It's like, if you have had that done to you, you know what it is. You know all about it. You know exactly what I'm talking about. So there's certain things I don't do. Lid on. Why? Because I understand that I've got a weakness for that kind of stimuli. I know it. So I can afford to be a nice guy. <laughs> I can afford it. You can have respect for others if you understand it. Why? Well, you know everyone's capable of terrible murder and violence. You respect them as being dangerous. There are some people I don't respect as being dangerous, but there are plenty who I do. If you're like under five foot five, I've got no respect for you being dangerous. You have to prove to me you are dangerous or I'm just going to treat you like a child. But uh, women, I respect women as being more dangerous than men. Not physically dangerous, but dangerous in 10 other ways it, it, where you just can't touch them. And it'd be a matter of this person sets against you, starts telling lies about you because it's the best tactic. You're in a lot of trouble and uh, there's almost no limit to the amount of trouble you can be in. So you treat them with respect. And you're a fool to mess with women because of that. You're a fool to. I don't mean mess with them by way of interact I mean mess with them by way of use the tricks you've got available you overpower and slap a woman about and the like show her that she ain't shit in, in, in the face of violence her response is going to be for her to use her weapons against you and her weapons are, you can't defend against them in the same way she can't defend against the physical attack and they know this <coughs> why have I always been as long as I've been broadcasting on the internet so dead set against feminism and sexism and you know uh, all them movements because they create the perfect places for sadistic people to hide in the crowd and all those rights and rules in their favour are just weapons <coughs> and I know there's people like that and if one person is able to do murder by exploiting them it's a bad rule isn't it if one person's able to kill seven babies and almost kill a few more it, she kind of shows the world where your system's flawed <coughs> and that in 2023, people can fall under spells, be tricked absolutely completely, actually fall under spells, and they know it. No one would believe it true, therefore I don't even need an alibi. It's like, it's a wake-up call. <coughs> yet to see a professional nail it even identify it as to say you know isn't this a little bit similar to certain other cases and like no fools are comparing it to other doctors and nurses who've killed as opposed to serial killers people will take the easiest chance they can get Peter Sutcliffe went after prostitutes because they are absolutely completely vulnerable the most vulnerable people you can really lay your hands on and she went for babies do you not see the straight line between the two trust me it's there <laughs>